Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm proud to present you the first results of a joint research project with my two colleagues, Ralf Oberneck and Jürgen Bär, from the Bundeswehr University in Munich in Germany, that deals with the detection of short cracks in riveted connections. At first, I'll have a look at relevant steel structures for this detection method. Actually, we have about 25,000 railway bridges in Germany. About the half of them are made of steel. And 58% of these steel bridges are actually older than 70 years. And for every fifth bridge of this, this corresponds to approximately to 2,000 bridges, we are actually not able to determine a sufficient remaining fatigue life. The assessment of the fatigue resistance of these structures is currently based on SN curves and the linear mode damage accumulation hypothesis. If sufficient remaining fatigue life cannot be evaluated with this method, for railway bridges in Germany, we are in operating time interval verification based on fracture mechanics is carried out. Therefore, a fatigue crack at the edge of the rivet hole is assumed. You can see here, also here, which is which extends five millimeter beyond the edge of a rivet head or a covering plate. It can be found visually during a bridge inspection. But considering these kinds of the crack assumption, we start the crack propagation at a late point of the cycling lifetime. The potential of crack initiation and also the stable crack propagation below the rivet head is not included in the assessment. Therefore, this part of the lifetime is a subject of a current research project at our uh, university, which is presented by my colleague Thomas Riedel here at the conference. He determines crack propagation parameters for old mild steels, as you can see here. But the main focus of this project is the crack growth below the rivet heads. Initial studies have already shown that the crack growth at a hole, at the rivet hole, is significantly slowed by the pre-stress forces of the rivets and also the friction in the connection. For instance, the friction below the rivet head, as we can see here in this picture. But if we want to consider these short cracks in the fatigue life assessment, we will need non-destructive non testing methods to be able to detect these cracks. Therefore, a smart method could be the thermoelastic simulated lock-in thermography. We used such tension specimens and such rivet light bolts, you can see here, and the typical corrosion prevention coating to simulate a riveted member at the bridge. The, and the edge of the hole was notched by wire cutting, as you can see here, and an uh, FET crack were initiated. The crack length at the beginning of the measurement was between 5 mm near the surface, below the rivet head, and in the middle, approximately 6 mm here. The overlap of the rivet head was 7.5 millimeters as you can see here. Fatigue tests on the pure tension loading were performed and we started with a in gradually increasing stress range from 44 up to 80 megapascal and we performed the tests at different load frequency, loading frequencies from 0.25 up to 10 Hertz to simulate the loading of different bridge members. Let's have a look at the analysis of the temperature signal after the measurement. If this blue graph here uh, would be the alternating stress of the sample, this red graph could be the temperature signal from the measurement. The signal is dissected by a discrete Fourier transformation in first the mean temperature of the sample, the thermoelastic effect, the green graph here, which we call the E mode, the elastic mode, and the dissipative energy, called D mode, which we have at a, at a crack tip, and this uh, signal is coupled with a double loading frequency generally. Another effect we had to consider is the thermal diffusion length of the measurement. It depends on the loading frequency and a few thermodynamic materials, the thermal conductivity, the density, 
and the specific heat capacity of the material. For our material for all steel, you can see the graph here. And as we can see here in the three measurements, the lower the frequency, the higher the diffusion length. Consequently, we need low frequencies to detect short cracks below the rivet head. But on the other side, low frequencies result in lower temperature increase due to the dissipated energy of the crack tip. Consequently, there will be a significant difference in the detectable temperature changes in E mode and in D mode. As mentioned before, at the crack tip, elastic stresses as well as plastic deformations are present. Therefore, a detection of cracks should be possible in amplitude images of the E mode as well as the D mode. On the left side, you see images of the measurement with 0.5 Hz at a crack length of 6.5 mm at the front side here. In the E mode image, a clear asymmetry of the temperatures on both sides of the rivet head are visible. The higher temperature changes on the right side are caused by the elastic stresses in front of the fatigue crack. The D mode image there is no temperature effect around the rivet head visible. Consequently, we can use only the E mode for detection of the cracks. To evaluate the possibilities of crack detection on the rivet head with thermoelastic or thermographic methods, measurements were performed at a different crack length between 5 and 6.5 mm at the front side, at the beginning and at the end of the measurement. A series of thermographic measurements at different crack lengths is shown on the left side. At a crack length below 5.5 mm, for instance here, there is no significant difference in the amplitude images between the left or the right side of the rivet head. Above a crack length of 5.5 mm, here and also here, the region with higher E amplitude values on the right side becomes more and more pronounced, while the left side is independent on the crack length. See here. Consequently, a visual comparison of the temperature field on both sides of the rivet head allows the detection of a crack growing below the rivet head. Still, it's two millimeter below the rivet head. To quantify the results of this visual impression, line profiles of the temperature amplitudes over the cross section perpendicular to the loading direction were created. Four of them you can see here. All temperature profiles showed a comparable run. The E amplitude values are rising with increasing distance from the spathomen edge and the maximum value are found at the edge of the rivet head and followed by a significant drop of the amplitude volume near to zero over the rivet head. In the measurement at a crack length of 5.3 millimeters, here the first diagram, nearly no difference between both sides near the rivet head are visible. With an increasing crack length here and then here, the maximum temperature on the right side near rivet head are increasing and also the region with the higher temperature values, you can see here and especially here, widens whereas the temperature profiles on the left side of the rivet remains independent of the crack length. So let me summarize. The experiments have shown that under an unaxial loading, a detection of cracks under a rivet head using thermoelastic simulated lug in thermography is possible. Due to the thermal diffusion length, the probability increases with a decreasing load frequency. Due to the low D mode amplitude, it's not possible to detect the cracks based on the plastic deformation in front of the crack. To use this effect, a significant higher loading would be necessary to achieve a higher temperature increase caused by dissipation 
with energy at the crack tip. For crack detection, a direct comparison of the temperature profiles on both sides of the rivet must be undertaken. The small thermal effects allows detection when the crack length or geometry on both sides of the rivet hole are different. Or, in our case, on our examples, um, there's only a crack at one side of the rivet head. Another possibility would be to monitor a group of similar stressed rivets to detect a crack at one or some of them. For the detection of cracks in real structures or under complicated loading and geometry conditions, further investigations are necessary at the moment. So we are at the end of the presentation and I thank you for your attention.